Hey guys, welcome to another reading. Today's reading is all about how they're thinking and feeling for you. So we're going to be tuning into your person's emotions, getting into their heart and seeing what's going on in there. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. And basically you're going to see which of these cards is sticking out to you, calling your name, drawing your attention in towards it. And then as soon as you make up your mind, just scroll down to the timestamps and the comments and the description and jump right into your pile. And if you like how I read tarot, and you want to see more of it, then be sure to head to my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about how you can improve your love life and get a boyfriend. And before that, I posted one all about what you're manifesting, a career reading, a money reading, and a bunch of love readings. But there are over 80 exclusive readings you'll only get access to as soon as you sign up for Patreon. You also get early and ad-free access to all my YouTube videos. So if that sounds good to you and you're interested in signing up, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description and join me on Patreon. Patreon. Also, if you would like to book a private session with me, you can do that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. Whether you have some really specific questions you want to get into, a specific situation you want some guidance on, or whether you just want me to open channel, do an energy check-in, see what your guides, angels, ancestors have to say to you, either one works. You can book that at my website, briarrosetarot.com, and the link for that is in my description. So that's about all I have to say, guys. Now, if you need more time to decide, you can totally feel free to rewind, pause, and take as much time as you need, but we're going to go ahead and jump into pile one. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. So for your pick a card, you guys got attachment, longing, desperation, and for your other tarot cards, you got the three of wands, the ace of pentacles, the death card, the magician, the three of swords, and the two of cups. So what I'm picking up on right away is a lot of interest from this person. It feels like they're very into you, but they kind of don't know where you stand. And I feel like that's a big question mark in their mind that keeps them from maybe stepping forward or wanting to make things more concrete with you. Like I do feel like they want things to be solid with you with the ace of pentacles they may have serious intentions but there's also a part of them that because they don't really know where you stand and they may even have some fears or insecurities about being abandoned or about you know people leaving them or something like that um maybe they even have attachment issues but i also see with the three of wands they may kind of not want to lock things down with you because it feels like i don't know if pile number one is going to leave me i don't know if pile one is serious i don't know if pile one really cares that much um i feel like there's a lot of fear and trepidation coming through almost like because this person doesn't know where you stand that they kind of push their emotions away as well they don't they're not comfortable with letting these emotions fully overwhelm them and like letting it be whatever it's going to be there is a strong fear energy coming through and a fear of being hurt a fear of being left behind i feel like with them they definitely worry that maybe you would get bored with them or maybe they wouldn't be enough for you. Um, I almost feel like they do a really good job at keeping their emotions at bay or playing it cool, like even to themselves being like, yeah, uh, I don't really care that much. But deep down inside, they definitely do think about you. Um, I feel like this person, you know, they may have runner energy or they may be the type of person that when things get really good in their life, they sabotage them or they just don't feel worthy of like real love because it feels like there's a very frenetic energy, almost like I just want to get up and leave right now. Like, you know, have you ever been somewhere and you've just been like frantic, like I got to go or you've been with a friend and then suddenly they just randomly are like, I have to leave guys. I, I just have to leave. And you're like, what, what, why? Like, what is going on? but they almost have something going on inside their head or they're having an anxiety attack or they saw an ex and they're panicking. But it almost gives me that energy of like a frantic, um, like not really knowing what to do. I feel like this person, it's, it's like they don't want to sabotage things with you. They don't want to leave you behind. They do really like you. But I also feel like they're kind of pessimistic about it and they think that maybe things are inevitably going to end or maybe they think that inevitably you're going to hurt them or that you just don't care as much. I feel like they kind of have a sense of like, why would someone like that stay with someone like me? And they may put you up on a pedestal in a way that could be 
like actually working against you where maybe they see you as so great that it's like, why would they stick around with me? Or maybe they're just generally like they consider themselves not good at relationships um, or they think of themselves as, you know, um, like toxic or that, you know, they may say like, yeah, I'm just, I'm horrible. I ruin everything. Or why would anyone like me? You know, those kinds of statements. Like, I feel like there's a lack of self-worth coming through. Um, I feel like they're still very curious about you. I'm picking up a lot of curiosity towards you in particular. So I don't know if for some of you guys, this is a like crush situation that hasn't coalesced into anything. Or if you're dating or in a relationship with this person, it feels like there's still a lot they don't know about you and you still definitely have their full attention. They haven't gotten bored. They're not feeling like the energy is stagnant between you guys. I feel like they're still very invigorated by you, energized by you, but sometimes it kind of scares them. Like they almost like you too much or they think, God, there's something wrong with me. Like I wake up in the morning and the first thing I think of is pile one, like what the heck? And I do feel like they're kind of tapping into that energy of, you know, the exciting part of a crush that is kind of scary, but also fun but it's almost like leaning too far on the scared side where they're just convinced that you're not going to stick around or that you will not follow through with them. Um, it's almost like there's a very transient energy here or a very, um, a very like, I don't know if pile number one is going to stick around. Like, I feel like in a way, this person could also just be someone that wants to date around a lot. Like, if you are, if this is someone who is a little bit of a player, I could definitely see that being their energy um, a little bit. But it feels like some of that player energy, even if it is real, is coming from a place of like not knowing where they stand with you and kind of maybe they if they felt like they could completely believe that things were going to work out then they would stop doing that i almost feel like that's this person's coping mechanism is like they act like a player or they act like they don't care or they find other people and they're kind of always on to the next and i think that's what scares them about you is like for the first time they really feel like you kind of have their heart or they you kind of really know them and they've opened up to you or something and i feel like for them it's just really scary like they don't really know how to manage Manage these emotions so yeah this could be an energy that ends in like self-sabotage relationship sabotage it's not necessarily a good thing when someone feels this strongly but we can see they do feel really strongly with the two of cups coming out so they do feel that deep emotional connection with you and I also am getting a message that they feel like they've been able to open up to you in a way that they may not have felt they were able to open up to anyone else in the past um, they may have felt like they couldn't really tell anyone else anything um, or that they couldn't you know be as vulnerable and as honest as they are with you and tell you certain things that they haven't told anyone else i also feel like they find you very attractive like they think of you as very beautiful or sexy um you're definitely their type so they're definitely coming through with like that strong interest and attraction in you um but I feel like when it gets to their emotional side, that's when they kind of chicken out and get freaked out. Let me get some song cards for you, pile number one. We want some song cards for pile one. I'm going to close my eyes. So we got Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys. Okay. What song cards sum up pile number one's thoughts and feelings towards pile number one? Blue Ain't Your Color, Keith Urban, Bleed to Love Her, Lindsay Buckingham. Okay. Someday the strokes. Let me try to get these more out. This one is my favorite mistake, Cheryl Crow. I don't know if some of you guys like told this person off or there's someone in this pile that like gave this person an ultimatum or told them, you know, I don't want anything to do with you or something like that. Or you were like harsh on them at some point, like maybe when you first were dating them when you would flirt with them you would do it in a way that was like teasing or you would you know make fun of them playfully or something but there's something coming through about that person really liking it like they they got kind of turned on by it or they the more boundaries you put up with them the more feisty you are i feel like they actually like that about you um they kind of get invigorated by it 
So yeah, it's a turn on for sure. We also got Love is a Lo Losing Game, Amy Winehouse, Awful Things, Lil Peep. Uh, I think those were the two I didn't read. Hopefully I got to all of them, all the others. Um, but yeah, I think with Love is a Losing Game, you can see that pessimism coming through really strongly. Like this person just doesn't think, just does not believe that things are going to work out and things are going to be beautiful for them. They may be the kind of person that has never imagined themselves getting married or never um, like really thought they were even capable of a long-term relationship or never thought that they like maybe they always considered themselves like a player and they'd laugh about it and kind of be like haha yeah well you know me I'm never gonna settle down and now they're like whoa I feel really strongly towards this person like what the heck is happening I also feel like this person is acknowledging some of them I'm not sure for everyone but there's some like guilt coming through with blue ancient color and my favorite mistake I feel like this person is acknowledging that maybe there were all also mistakes they've made and they do feel bad or guilty about some of that they have a sense of like feeling sad about hurting you about something I'm not sure what this is but maybe this is what prompted some kind of argument that I was picking up on that they liked they like when you're mad they like when you put down boundaries with them but they are acknowledging that they messed up and they actually do feel bad like they feel guilty about it and it bothers them um i also feel like this person isn't the best though at communicating that or expressing that like they wouldn't feel comfortable coming up to you and being like listen i know i messed up and maybe even you guys don't have that kind of relationship again it's a general reading take what resonates leave the rest but maybe they kind of know you're upset with something they did but then they're like if i come and bring this up they're gonna think i'm crazy or you know, it would be so weird if I just like came up to them and apologized for talking to another girl when we've never dated. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel like there's some sense that there's also a sense of almost like you being too good for them. I don't know if like you are like more I want to I keep hearing like good girl. Um, so I don't know if some of you guys are like a good girl or a good guy or you're like more on the well-behaved side of things and this person like i said maybe a player or kind of on the badly behaved side of things and if that's the case i feel like they are coming through to say that yeah they kind of they kind of sometimes feel bad about that or think gee pile number one is so much better than me and what would they even do with someone like me and I feel like in a way I could definitely see this person running away from this connection because we did get bleed to love her Lindsay Buckingham and just a lot of the cards are bringing to mind um, like those kinds of relationships that Stevie Nicks had with Lindsay Buckingham where they were like super in love when they were younger but then they had this huge falling out and there was a lot of drama to put it mildly in their relationship and then even like six years later they're still kind of singing at each other writing songs about each other clearly there's still those emotions but it's almost like you have to imagine that at the time back in the 70s all the way back then when they were originally dating and having a falling out they probably thought well whatever like this is how I feel now but it's just another breakup and you know in a year or a couple months or a few weeks maybe I'll feel a lot better I won't even remember this person and then it turns out to be this monumental love that they kind of can't get over can't get past so I'm not saying you won't be able to get past this of course we can heal alchemize anything in our life but I feel like this person is giving me that energy of someone that like doesn't almost appreciate fully what they have until they lose it um, and kind of like I said self-sabotages or runs away from things because I feel like in in a way they're not a they're not comfortable confronting their emotions like they really do think well if I run hard and fast enough from this then it's gonna go away or if I pretend like it's not happening or if I if I go sleep with someone else then I won't have feelings for pile one and of course that's not how feelings work feelings have to be acknowledged and processed feelings are in tarot water and if you think about water that you just try to like oh like maybe it'll go away it's, it's just gonna evaporate a lot of times that's when like a flood happens or you know if you have a leak in your house and you don't fix it it will rot away the wood slowly you might not even know what's happening because it's not as dramatic as like a fire or a big windstorm but it's gonna cause damage even if it's completely silent even if you can tell yourself like no it's not no it's fine that the faucet keeps leaking into the walls it's going to cause problems later down the road and that's how 
what our emotions are you know you have to process them and i feel like this person isn't the best at processing and they kind of just put things to the side and pretend like it's not happening and it does get them into a lot of trouble let me get some more tarot um how is pile number one's person feeling towards pile number one the high priestess so they may see this as a spiritual connection or they may see you as very spiritual i don't know if you are into i mean you you're watching a tarot channel so it's probably likely that you're into tarot i guess maybe some of you guys pull tarot yourself or you are just into metaphysical spiritual things we got the two of swords we got the eight of cups and the king of pentacles so if you are in a relationship with this person i also could see this person like thinking of leaving a lot but it's almost like it's not because of anything bad it's more because i feel like the emotions overwhelm them and then they get scared you know they start thinking like yeah this is like this is this is pointless like i'm not good at relationships it's going to be sabotaged anyway what am i doing i might as well just rip the band-aid off now and get over this pain because this is too much i could definitely see this person having like avoidant attachment style or some kind of disorganized attachment style we also got the seven of swords and then we got the three of cups as well so i do feel like this person you know yeah there may even be things they're not being completely honest about um I feel like they kind of do that as a way to protect themselves because deep down inside there is that insecurity and there is that feeling that like pile number one could crush my heart. Pile number one could just completely ruin me. So let me put them at arm's length and let me pretend like this isn't happening. Let me hold them at a distance and let me look at things kind of logically. I feel like this person also like does chaotic stuff, but I feel like they feel very pulled towards you, pile one, and they kind of can't get you out of their mind. You're on their mind a lot. We did get the high priestess. So they may even feel like it's a spiritual connection or they may dream of you. They may think of you all the time. Um, but we do have the three of cups and I am getting that vibe that, you know, they may sabotage things by seeking out other partners or by, um, like giving attention to other people because it's almost like that also feels more safe to them because i feel like they feel very vulnerable around you they feel like they're kind of split wide open you know what i mean like you see through them like i'm seeing a little i don't know a specimen on a microscope you know that someone's viewing under a microscope and they can see every detail of the cells that's what i feel like they feel in front of you like you really see through to their core if you do have this high priestess energy um then and that's ruled by cancer in uh tarot so maybe some of you guys have cancer placements but either way i feel like this person feels like you can see right through them and you can see who they are at their core and you see past the pretense they may have put out like a carefully curated image to others where they act like they're really cool or they act like they're mr smooth or miss smooth or they try to act like you know they are the big man on campus or the big girl on campus whatever and i feel like with you you see past that on one hand they love that and they're like so relieved like oh, okay finally someone who understands me but on the other hand it makes them panic because they're like oh my god they can see all my dirty laundry all the dirty details all the things i try to hide or run away from so yeah it's very it's very hard for them to process all of this it's very hard for them to kind of deal with i feel like the inner fear mixed with the longing they have for you mixed with the desire and the like wanting to step forward but then the total panic of like oh my god what am i gonna do about this um and what will happen if pile number one gets bored with me when they get bored with me when they decide to leave me yeah there's a lot of like emotions swirling around with this person so let me clear these a little bit make some space and then we will pull a few more cards so i want to pull from this deck so we want to know about pile number one's person and what they're thinking and feeling for them what are they thinking and feeling okay that's a love card so yeah there's definitely strong love movement it's so interesting that contrast we got a, a major love card and then we got the movement card which does remind me of the three of wands and that kind of like 
I feel like this person almost like when they get, I don't want to say bored, but when they like start feeling like things are too solid and predictable, they do panic and they start getting like antsy. Like they start feeling like, oh, like I can't deal with this. This is too much. Um, I got to go. You know, there's some kind of like panic drive that sets over them, you know, this like runner mentality or this, this feeling of like, go, go, go. I got to get out of here. You know, that's that I really feel like this person struggles with. Um, and I feel like even if you haven't dated this person seriously, this could be if they do have a crush, why they don't approach, because it could be that even if it never coalesced into a full relationship, that those feelings are very triggering for them, no matter what kind of stage you're at in the relationship, they're still going to be triggered by those emotions when they come up the feeling of, you know, wow, they totally have my heart. They have control of me. Maybe this person had like a traumatic relationship with their parents or something. Maybe they felt very beholden or very like they didn't have supportive parents or whatever. And now they don't really trust love. Once those feelings come up, it just triggers an alarm inside them. It doesn't make them feel safe and looked after and happy. Like, oh, I found my person. It makes them feel like, oh my God, I found my person and my emotions are going crazy. And I feel like they almost don't trust themselves too. You know, there is this sense of like, I'm out of control. I don't know what I'm doing. If I give my heart to this person, it's going to get stomped on. It's going to get destroyed. And wow, I have to like bail out of this now. This is yeah, they kind of see it as like a threat. So let me get some final cards. How do they see pile number one? How do they see? Oh my gosh, we have so many like love cards, like deep love cards. We got the sacred union, partnership, romance, the word Lord. Again, that vibe that they think of you as better than them in some way, smarter than them, or just I'm getting that strong vibe of like, why is pile number one with me? Or why would pile one be with me? Or once pile one sees me for who I really am, they are not going to be interested and we got the dragon's duel inner conflict morality conscious choice they're definitely going through some inner conflict they definitely go back and forth with this i feel and like you know one day one moment you may be confused and that's why you're watching this reading is because i can totally see why you would be confused i feel like even they're confused they don't even know what they're doing they go back and forth in their mind with like yeah pile number one is the one i'm in love i'm obsessed i'm so into them with like i gotta leave i gotta go what is this or yeah i'm gonna approach pile one like definitely we have such a connection this is awesome i can't wait to see them next i'm so like, I really like them. This is so fun. I love having a crush to like, oh my God, I'm never going to talk to pile one again. I don't want them to see me. I'm embarrassed. Or let me go talk to this other person because I got to get my mind off pile one. I probably seem crazy that I keep thinking of them. They're going to be weirded out if they even knew how much I think about them. So like I said, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of confusion. I feel like they really vacillate between those two emotions or those two modes and it's hard for them to really know even what to trust with themselves and their own emotions. Like I feel like they, they, yeah, they don't trust themselves. That's what it really comes down to. They feel like if they stay with you, they'll sabotage the relationship. They'll mess it up somehow. They feel like deep down, they're not a good person or not good enough at relationships. And they don't want you to figure that out. I feel like they'd almost rather sabotage things on their own. And at least then they have some control over it. Um, versus fully letting you see them and then being disgusted and you leave. So they're almost like, let me sabotage it right now. Oh, and it was just two, 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 angel number. And two is, of course, in everything, numerology, tarot, whatever, so symbolize partnership. So again, there's so much strong symbology around you guys being very much having that deep connection. We got the two of cups. We got the sacred union. We've gotten so many cards that speak about the depth of your partnership um but i just feel like this person may not be ready for that let me get some astrology dice to see what other energies we're going to pick up on so we got uranus capricorn and the ninth house so maybe these are some of their placements we have aquarius capricorn and sagittarius coming out so Sagittarius makes perfect sense because I've been picking up on that runner energy. Definitely Sagittarians embody that. The ninth house is the house of travel and Sagittarians really don't love to let grass grow under their feet and stay in one place forever and 
not do anything. They, they always want to be like moving, going places, trying new things. And some of that is like a way of distracting themselves and not confronting emotions. Let's call out the sages, but it has to be said. Um, and I feel like that's what this person may be doing. Like maybe they're seeking out other people or going new places or keeping themselves busy to prevent themselves from thinking of you. But I don't know how well it's working. Then we also got Uranus that rules over Aquarius. And Uranus is a very independent energy. Aquarius is highly independent. Um, and also very kind of logically minded. They often can be uncomfortable with their own emotions. So I feel like for you guys, again, Capricorn also has that energy. They're both Saturn ruled and they both have water elements. Okay. Water, the um, Aquarius is the water bearer. Capricorn is the sea goat. So interestingly, they both have water that they deal with in their sign um, symbol, but they're not water signs and they are a little holding those emotions at a distance so they do have those emotions but they may cover it up with a veneer of yeah i don't care um or they kind of can compartmentalize their emotions in certain ways so obviously one's air the other's earth they're a little different but they do have that in common and so yeah i feel like this person has those emotions but they feel very much more comfortable putting it aside keeping it at a, at a distance not acknowledging it even to themselves and just kind of like putting that at arm's length instead of delving down deep into it and you know acknowledging what's going on so yeah that is what i have for you pile one i really hope it resonates if it does let me know down in the comments i always love hearing from you hearing your thoughts stories observations and make sure to give this reading a like hit the thumbs up button and if you want to see more of my content head on over to my patreon i just posted a reading all about how you can improve your love life and get into a relationship and before that i posted one about what you're manifesting and there's also a bunch of career readings some money readings that i just posted and love readings of course if all of that sounds good to you and you're interested in delving deeper into tarot then head on over to my patreon and the link for that is underneath the timestamps by the way you also get early and ad free access to all my youtube videos so you get to see them over there first and like i said if you want to sign up go to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description for Patreon. Also, if you're interested in getting a private session with me, you can do that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. If you have some really specific questions you want to delve into, some specific answers you want, um, we can do that. We can also just open channel, do an energy check-in, see what your guides have to say. You get to really choose how the session goes, how long we spend on each topic. So it's your time. And if you're interested in booking that slot with me, go to my website, briarrosetarot.com. And the link for that is in my description. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I will see you again very soon with another reading take care guys bye hey pile two welcome to your reading so if you pick this prosperity card this is going to be your reading it says abundance success and for your other cards you guys got the world the ace of wands the ace of cups prince of wands six of pentacles and the prince of cups so what i am picking up on right away is this huge spark of interest and so i wasn't surprised at all when i got double aces ace of wands and ace of cups this person is really into you and for the majority of people that picked this pile i would assume this is a crush or a very early relationship because it feels like there's so much potential and enthusiasm if you've been dating this person for a while and they still feel this way about you i mean dang okay they are really into you because it almost feels like new love or they they just are so excited like i feel like they're also still very curious or they haven't seen like any downsides about you they may view you through really rose-colored glasses even if if you've been dating this person for a while like i said just wow because this is kind of like that ideal like early stages of love or summer romance or something feeling so if you have been with this person for months or years and they still feel this way like that's a major compliment but i definitely could see this being like early crush early love for a lot of you guys and yeah this person feels really into you they feel really strongly um we we have the world coming out so they may even feel like okay pile number two could be the one they may feel like you are their person and they've kind of like 
like reached that completion moment where they're like, okay, I don't need to keep looking. I'm good. I found my, I found my person. They have a lot of enthusiasm for you. We got the Prince of Wands and the Prince of Cups. Those correspond with the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups in traditional tarot. Um, and then we have the same thing happening here. So we have both cups and wands. So that's really symbolic because wands, of course, really symbolizes that kind of sexual interest more than anything when it comes to relationships. Um, but it's not just that, but it's usually that like overwhelming feeling you have when you think someone's super physically attractive where you're just like, wow. And it's almost physical. Like you feel it physically. It's not just like a mental or emotional. It's not like a long term, like, yeah that could work it's it's like oh i need them right now i have so much passion i have so much enthusiasm it's that kind of spark of sexual desire and excitement around someone and like wanting to do stuff with them wanting to go uh you know maybe like take a trip with them or be active with them or like you know just go to the store with them and go go on these random like adventures with them it's that feeling of excitement and enthusiasm we get at the very beginning of a relationship that makes relationships so intoxicating and then we have the cups and of course cups are emotions and like kind of that deeper love that emotional sharing so really for me when i do relationship readings i love to see cups and wands together because to me it sim symbolizes that relationship that is both emotional and very there's a lot of attraction so it's not just like a boring old love not that you know cups are boring, but maybe if there's only cups, then maybe there's not a lot of physical attraction. And if there's only wands, maybe there's only physical attraction, not a lot of emotions. With them combined, it's like, okay, we have it all. We have all the ingredients we need for that ideal relationship. And I feel like this person, yeah, they really like you and they are excited to see you. Whenever they get to see you, I'm hearing they really look forward to it. Like if there's a day when they know they're going to see you, like say you guys work together in a office and you guys have a meeting scheduled together that day, you know, they get giddy and they get ang not anxiety, but like fun anxiety, like kind of like butterflies, like, oh, what are they going to wear today? What am I going to say? Oh, I should tell them this joke or I should ask them about this. Like they can't wait to see you. I do feel like this person definitely gets butterflies about seeing you gets kind of like fun, like I said, fun anxious, but they might like check, double check themselves in the mirror, making sure they look okay before they head into the meeting. They may like, you know, test their breath, you know, breathe into their hand and kind of like try to smell like, okay, do I smell okay? Let me rinse out with some mouthwash. Let me brush my teeth extra hard. Let me gel my hair right. I feel like they definitely want to put their best foot forward with you and they are just enthusiastic. The knights also are an enthusiastic card, um, have a lot more energy because they're some of the younger cards um, in the suit, but also they are a little bit more mature and strategic than the page. So usually it's someone that really is not just because the page alone can be kind of reckless, like just doing it for the sake of it. And the knight is like one level up. So they're, yeah, they have that enthusiasm, but they're also going to be more strategic about it think it through and i do feel like this person you know it's not like they are just 100 percent into you but it's temporary and they're they don't really care it does feel like they really like you and they could see this being something long term so they are kind of being strategic and maybe this is where the anxiety i'm picking up on comes in because i do feel like they spend time thinking about you thinking about what you would like thinking about what they could say to you and how they could impress you and they definitely want to impress you there's almost a little anxiety coming through with like ah oh, i hope pile number two likes it i hope they think i'm cool i hope they appreciate it um definitely wanting to put their best foot forward and to have you see them in a good light we go, even got the six of pentacles so they may have a desire to really show to you that they are successful we also got this prosperity card for your pick a card so it could be that you know they want to show off that they have some financial success or that they can take care of you or you know maybe they want to show off even something like their muscles or that they can be strong and protect you or if it's a girl maybe she's gonna take extra time on her makeup and wear her cutest outfit to see you and make sure she has the best perfume but it feels like this person really wants you to kind of see what they can do for you and see how they could work in your life long term i am feeling like this person really likes your personality they're telling me that you're really funny or you make a lot of jokes that they really enjoy and i feel like they just get a kick out of you like they kind of you kind of make them laugh and giggle and yeah like i'm hearing kicking 
kicking their feet in the air, you know? So I don't know if they're actually doing that, but kind of like how a little kid gets excited and starts kicking their feet. Like, I feel like they just, yeah, they're so excited to be around you and they see you as a real catch. They also see you as someone who might be dating around and might have quite a lot of charisma yourself. We can see that with the Prince of Wands and Prince of Cups as well. That can be an interpretation because those can both be players um, in different ways. But since it's not the page, I'm not too worried about that and I'm just not feeling that vibe. But I almost feel like they may worry that with you. They may feel like, not that you're a player, but that you have so many options and that you have dated around or you're not going to be easily impressed or they're going to really have to bring out their A game to impress you because you've kind of been there, done that. And you're not like just this wide eyed, like, wow. And I feel like they kind of like that challenge, but it definitely does scare them as well. So let me get into some song cards for pile number two. We want to get song cards for how pile two's person feels about them. Let's see what song cards we're going to get. Rehab, Rihanna, okay. How does Pal 2's person feel about them? All of me wants all of you, Sufjan Stevens. One Track Mind, Chromio. Blue Ancient Color, Keith Urban, and this was Pillow Talk, Zane. And let's see. A Sky Full of Stars, Coldplay, and... Okay, I can never say that song, but... Yeah, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Yeah, I can't say the song name. <laughs> I should probably take that out. But anyway, so we got, um, but it's their song that starts with Ape. So that's all I can say. Um, so we got, yeah, a lot of songs that I feel like talk about this person thinking of you quite a lot and you being on their minds. Um, and again, though, I, especially the song by Beyonce and Jay-Z that I can't say, but it starts with Ape. Um, that song is really sticking out to me because I feel like it shows like in the video and stuff, kind of like two partners in crime, so to speak. You know what I mean? They're, they're kind of running around the Louvre and, and just like going wild and having fun and just kind of like seem like, like kind of BFF energy in that, you know, like it almost gives the vibe of like you and your best friend when you're doing something you shouldn't. Cause I think they rented out the Louvre for that. And then they're filming it in the Louvre and it's, it's obviously not like they're doing anything wrong, but you could imagine like if you were with like your best friend and you somehow got into the Louvre after hours, you'd be like, Oh my God, even if you paid for it and it was all like fine and legal, you'd still be like, bro, we're inside the Louvre and we have like the run of this place. This is crazy. You know what I mean? And that is the vibe that video gives me. And I feel like with them, like they almost see you like a best friend or like a fun, like, like I said, partner in crime, like, oh, we just laugh together or we just have so much fun or we just do wild things together. And, um, and like, I, I also feel like, I don't know, I just keep getting your personality and your laugh and like you being really bubbly. They may also see you as someone that's like successful or gonna be successful. And I feel like that's attractive to them. Like they almost see you as someone that, I don't I don't wanna say they could build with you, but like they just see you as someone that brings a lot to the table, I guess, or like, I feel like you're the kind of person or this is what they're saying where like even if you were like a stay-at-home mom you would want to be like pta president or head of a charity or something you know what i mean or if you were working you might rise through the ranks or even if you were like yeah i'm not being pta president just people like you and people would respect you and look up to you and even if you were not you know at a traditional job or something that everyone in your circle would kind of look up to you and be like, wow, pile number two, like they're the best baker in the whole neighborhood. Or they, you know, they're just really cool. Like they just, they just seem cool. And I love being around them. They have a great personality. There's something about your personality that's coming through really strong and um, just kind of like enjoying spending time with you and thinking that you make a really good impression on others. And again, I feel like this person likes that. They kind of like that your social something about you being social how you socialize and your personality is i feel like just something they consider a huge plus and i also feel like that makes them have fun with you it's not just about how others will perceive you although i do think they see it as a plus but it's also how they get to enjoy you and and how you how much fun you make 
your hangouts with them. Like it's, I'm feeling like it's never boring with you or there's never a huge lull in the conversation where you're not saying anything. We even got pillow talk. So like, even when it comes to being in bed with you, they may really look forward to like the pillow talk after, or just like the look in your eyes or like corny jokes you might make or like uh, the way you joke about stuff. Like, I feel like that is something, you know, it reminds me of that quote from like Sex in the City where, um big is talking about why he like came back to carry or whatever and he says you know sometimes you just want to be with the one that makes you laugh um i feel like that's kind of not that that's the only thing because obviously i don't think mr big would have been with carrie if she was just like carrot top the comedian or something you know like obviously he was attracted to her um but i think like sometimes you know that vibe that that can even indicate like a past life thing. When you feel like someone's your partner in crime, when you feel like you've known them forever, when you get that kind of giddy like BFF feeling, it can definitely indicate, oh, you knew them in a past life for sure. Um, and I feel like they they just really feel drawn to you. Like it's almost like it's something that happened instantly when they met you that you were just immediately on their mind all the time and they couldn't think of other people um and you kind of blotted out i'm seeing like literally an eclipse which is funny because actually i'm filming this during the eclipse for extra potent energy um but i'm seeing an eclipse in my mind and kind of how like the sun gets blotted out and i almost feel like that that's what happened like or when it's a cloudy day and suddenly the sun comes out and it blots out all the clouds and suddenly it's so bright. Like, I feel like that was how it felt when you entered into their life is like, they couldn't pay attention to anything else. You kind of took up all their focus. Let's get some of these cards. We want to get more tarot for pile number two and figure out what their person is thinking, feeling towards them, what their person is thinking and feeling towards them. Oh my goodness. The nine of wands. Okay. And the Nine of Swords, okay. And the Page of Pentacles. The King of Cups. The Death card, okay. Let's get one more. Temperance. Okay, interesting. So we got the Nine of Wands and the Nine of Swords. Um, yeah, I feel like this person, they may spend late nights thinking of you. They definitely may just feel like you're on their mind all the time. And I am hearing that song by Chromeo, One Track Mind. Um, and the lyrics are like, I got a one track mind and it's taking up all my time and it's all on you. You know, that's the that's the whole point of the song is just when you're so into someone and you can't really think of anything else um and so sometimes that may even get exhausting for them with the nine of swords and the nine of wands coming out they may feel like oh my god like i'm kind of over this i keep thinking of pile number um i think keep thinking of pile number two all the time and i am getting a vibe that for some of them they may even sometimes get a little bit jealous i'm not saying all the time but there may be a little bit of jealousy that happens and there may be a little bit of sometimes worrying about you being with others or you dating other people um yeah that could be something that i feel like really does kind of get to them or bother them this feeling that you know you don't they don't have your full attention like i almost feel like some of them may worry that they like you more than you like them and that you are off living your best life having fun flirty staying busy and i feel like on one hand that excites them they're drawn to that but on the other hand it definitely worries them and definitely makes them nervous that like you don't really care that much and you're not sitting around waiting for them you're not worrying about them and it's a one-sided connection um, like it's unreciprocated love or something. Um, yeah, I also feel like this person definitely wants to show you kind of like all the things they can do for you. Um, but in a way, because they do like you so much, sometimes it could kind of work the other way and make them not be willing to step forward because they do put you up on a pedestal or especially I feel like they think of you as just very busy and dating around or having fun, or you have a lot of suitors or you have a lot of romantic interests so why would you be with them that kind of a thing yeah that could be an energy that comes through a little bit let me get some more cards for pile number two we want to see how pile number two's person is thinking and feeling about them how are they thinking and feeling about pile two wishing well 
stuck in the mud. Dry desert, and let's get one more, okay. Spark, they definitely feel that spark of attraction towards you, and with wishing well, again, I almost feel like they see you as like this prize or this dream for them that could never actually happen in reality or that you might be too good for them. I, I feel like there's something I'm getting about like they would want to introduce you to family or friends because they would be so excited to show you off. They would be so excited to see those reactions from their loved ones and to, because I feel like they think that you would make such a good impression and you would also know how to handle yourself so smoothly in those social situations. That's really big to this person. I feel like, I, I don't know, I could see this person being like an air sign or having air placements. So Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, because, or being a Virgo because Virgo is Mercury world, because it feels like conversation is so important to this person. Like conversating, having interesting things to say, never running out of topics or just being curious about the world. All of that I feel like matters a lot to this person and they hate like a boring stagnant energy. They hate someone who's just super predictable and I feel like they never know quite what to expect with you. And also I feel like your moods may, ch some of you guys may be moody <laughs> or your moods change a lot or something and I feel like they like that as well. If you are moody, they think of that as attractive because they're like, ah, I never know what I'm going to get. And even though sometimes it may annoy them or they may get mad and be like oh I never know what I'm gonna get great you know but I feel like at the same time most of the time they kind of take it like a fun challenge like mm, I never know what I'm gonna get well who's it gonna be today what personality is it gonna be today so it's almost like if they dated you they're they're kind of telling me this and it's funny it's like it's like they're dating multiple women so they never have to get bored right because you have so many personalities but they're kind of teasing i don't know if they're funny or you're funny but i feel like this person sense of humor is coming through really strong and i feel like sense of humor is important to them um yeah I don't know, for some of you guys, this person is mentioning again, either some of you being in a different relationship or dating around and them being very jealous and them looking at that other person and constantly comparing themselves to them or kind of wishing ill on the relationship, just being a hater about it. Like maybe if you do have a partner, they look at that partner and they just, you know, like, ugh, who, who are they? Look at how they're dressed. Ugh, they're cringe. They might just be like the number one hater if you do have a partner of whoever that is because I feel like they definitely, definitely want you for themselves and think maybe this person isn't good enough for you. Okay, what was this? The word Lord. Okay, that makes sense because I said I could see Mercury placements or air placements. Feels like um, communication and intellect is really important to this person. They want a partner who's smart. They want a partner who's funny. They want a partner who's quick and knows how to talk and isn't boring. Um, and I feel like they definitely got that with you. I also definitely could see a lot of you guys in this pile having fire placements because you just seem to have that fire like energy and zest for life and fun and unexpected like you know maybe you know if someone doesn't know where you're going to be on a tuesday night because you may be out at the bar but you may be with a friend but you may be at home but you may be uh traveling to a totally different country like you know how fire signs just will keep you on your toes and always make it interesting and they kind of do everything for the plot i feel like I'm getting that kind of a vibe from you and I feel like this person really likes that. Like they think of it as fun. Like what is pile number two gonna do next? Um, then we got the sun dancers. They may also be attracted just to the way you physically move and they are definitely attracted to you overall. We got the eyes of beauty. So I think physically they just find you very, very attractive. Um, and again, there's something about your unpredictability coming through with the ice queen. Like maybe you're a challenge or you've been feisty with them in the past. I feel like they really like that. Um, let's get some astrology dice for pile number two. So we got the nodes, the North node, then we got um, Cancer, and then we got the ninth house, Sagittarius. So we have Cancer, Sagittarius, and then the North node. So this person may have felt like meeting you was destined somehow. And when you have a North node aspect in like Sinistry, it can talk about how someone could be a destiny, like a long-term destiny placement, or just a very faded um, meeting. So like someone that 
is supposed to come into your life to transform you in some way and help you with your soul growth whatever soul growth you committed to in this lifetime you know we all have different missions or things we're trying to work on that we came back to earth to deal with and so this person may have felt like you know meeting you was very faded or that they dreamed of you beforehand or that you've helped them in some kind of a growth way i also feel like you may have helped them loosen up and have more fun that sagittarius energy is coming through really strong and sages love to have fun they love to have a good time they hate to be bored that's why they rule the ninth house of travel and talk about that energy where you never know what to expect that is the epitome of sag in particular of all the fire signs because they do love to travel so you may find out when you call them and you're like hey it's tuesday morning where are you and they're like oh i'm in barcelona yeah i i i, I didn't tell you i took an overnight flight and yeah i just I just felt like going and they just are very unexpected in that way and that's what can make them so much fun is because they never are just wanting to st sit around and be stagnant you know for a healthy sad they're going to be out living their life experiencing the world and they can feel very hard to get a hold of because of that they can be sometimes like players because you know, they just want to talk to that person and then that person and then that person and that person as well. And they have a charming energy about them because they are so fun and because they also can be really funny um, and have a great sense of humor being ruled by Jupiter. So, you know, they can just charm everyone and have like all the stories, you know, that friend with the craziest stories that just you're like, oh, wait, you did what now? Or you got arrested for what? Or you almost got arrested or you stole a pie from a restaurant what the like that friend is probably got some really strong sag or ninth house placements um but yeah i feel like they think of you that way like you just charm them in the way you are always doing new things trying new things pushing boundaries and you don't feel like you're sitting around waiting for this person or that's how they perceive you as like you're very independent you're very kind of focus on yourself and I feel like they really like that um, and then we have cancer cancer rules the fourth house of family so this person really could see you as like a long-term even soul family member or just like for that long-term potential cancer is also the mom so you know they could literally be like this is the mother of my children or this is my baby daddy I could see this person raising my kids you know they may, I really feel like this person does really like you um, and also Cancer, of course, is ruled by the moon, so it's a little bit mysterious and keeps people guessing. Just like how in moonlight, if you've ever actually been somewhere that doesn't have a lot of like street lights and stuff, like I'm thinking of the Mojave Desert, um, where there's really not a lot of people around and you can't see much, but if you're ever out on a full moon, you can see actually with the light of the moon, you really can. But it's interesting how things really become kind of shadowy and they look super different and you can only see the outlines of things and you can kind of see it clearly a little bit once you let your eyes adjust but there's still this mystery and i feel like that's kind of how they view you is like you don't give away everything you're not just trying to be completely warm and fuzzy and open up your whole life it feels like you do keep a lot of mystery and i feel like that keeps them very intrigued as well so that is what i have for you pile number two i really hope it resonates if it does let me know down in the comments i always love hearing from you hearing your thoughts stories observations and make sure to give this reading a thumbs up hit the like button and if you would like to see more of my content head on over to my patreon i just posted a reading all about how you can improve your love life and get a boyfriend and before that i posted one all about what you're manifesting as well as a career reading a money reading and a bunch of love readings so if all of that sounds good to you and you're interested in signing up, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description. As soon as you sign up, you'll get access to over 80 exclusive readings you'll only find on Patreon and you also get early and add free access to all my YouTube videos. So they always get posted over there first and my Patreons get to be the first to watch them. Like I said, if that sounds good to you, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description for my Patreon. Also, if you're interested in booking a private session with me, you can do that at my website, briarrosetarot.com, and you can sign up for if you just want an energy check-in and just for me to channel and see what your guides, angels, ancestors want to tell you about your life, you can do that. You can also get really specific and ask some really specific questions and get down into the nitty gritty of astrology, tarot, channeling about whatever situation you'd like. So if you need some specific guidance or you just want one of those energy check-in, 
channeled readings and see what your guides want you to know right now. Either one works and you can book that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. Link for that is in my description. Thank you so much for watching guys. I am sending you so much love and light and I will see you again very soon with another reading. Take care guys. Bye. Hey Pile 3, welcome to your reading. So if you pick this Connections card, this is going to be your reading. So it says Partnership, Contract, Commitment, and let's get into your tarot. So you guys got the Princess of Swords, aka the Page of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Four of Wands, Queen of Swords, the Chariot, and the Princess of Cups, aka the Page of Cups. So we can see so much feminine energy coming through this reading. We got a bunch of princesses and queens and hardly any masculine suit cards. Actually, not hardly any, none. Um, so I feel like this person is pointing out some kind of divine feminine energy. We'll see how this kind of plays out for the rest of the reading. But there's some energy with like the divine feminine really finding her power. Of course, if you're a guy watching, Watching, this energy could be flipped for most of my viewers who are predominantly women I feel like this person may be intimidated by you really stepping into your divine feminine energy or just seeing you as very divine feminine and very much in your own power and I feel like it kind of makes this person a little intimidated and of course this could totally be flipped so interpret it how it resonates with you so if you're a guy it could also be maybe you being in your masculine or just this is a woman who's maybe really trying to tap into her feminine if you're asking about a woman. So like I said, take it how it resonates for you. But I do feel like there's an energy of some kind of feminine here who's really finding her power and maybe that intimidating others or people not being sure where they can fit in or like what kind of role they could play because it feels like she is so in her own power. And almost like for some of you guys, there may be an energy with like, especially a masculine who may have messed up or did something wrong and the feminine cutting him off or like punishing him and i feel like the masculine is coming through to be like wow okay i know i messed up but dang i didn't know you were going to move on that quickly or i didn't know you were going to cut me off that that much and like actually block me um so i feel like this person i don't know if there was something they did wrong or this person is just maybe nothing even happened but this person is just intimidated off the jump but there's something about like you finding your power pile three and there's something about you guys um really choosing not to wait for them that that is coming through or you really choosing not to tolerate their behavior um that's coming through i almost am getting like female rage or i'm hearing that like there's a TikTok so sound. I think it's from an Olivia Rodrigo song where she's like screaming. But, you know, I feel like, yeah, there's some kind of like female rage component or female anger. So whatever side you're on on it, like I said, take it how it resonates. Um, it could always be flipped. The guy could be really mad. But I feel like it's almost about this feminine putting up a boundary or a wall and like almost like vanishing. I'm hearing this Ava Max song, Cold as Ice, where she's like, um, something, something, but she's like, I'm gone, cold as ice. And she keeps saying that. And I feel like that's the vibe is like, I'm not feeling for you anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm not tolerating something anymore. I am finding my power because we got two feminine sword cards, princess of swords coming out over the queen of swords. Then we got the queen of pentacles. Then we got the chariot. And then we finally have the Princess of Cups, which is a little less intimidating, but these are some very intimidating cards. I mean, the swords are very mental, very intelligent, very smart. They see through the BS. They are, of course, corresponding to air in astrology. And so air is really intelligent and smart and, you know, great thinkers and very creative and, you know, great talkers. They can see through the BS and cut through the BS. So the pentacles are earth and the pentacles are very like brass tacks like let's get down to business what what did you just tell me like no bs you know they're not as emotional neither one is as emotional as the cups or the wands fire or water so i feel like there's some energy of this feminine taking her energy back or pulling away and the masculine kind of like panicking or trying to play it cool but not really liking it um yeah, again, could be flipped, but take it how it resonates for you. Um, and I feel like 
what's coming through really predominantly is fear from this other person um, of like, did they cut me off entirely? Are they just wanting nothing to do with me? Are they just completely going to ghost me forever? And almost like feeling like it's pointless to reach out or it's pointless to try to talk to you because you might have them blocked or you just wouldn't respond. Um, and also possibly some shame coming through about a way this person handled something. Um, so if they did mess up and you blocked them for a reason, like a good reason, they may know really well that that is a good reason. Like they may try to tell themselves and say like, well, they went crazy. Yeah, they randomly blocked me, but they know deep down that like it was, it was deserved. Um, so I feel like on one hand, this energy kind of excites them and it kind of like they respect it and it kind of keeps them coming back. But then on the other hand, they're just really intimidated and kind of unsure of how to proceed. Like, what am I supposed to say now? Or what am I supposed to do? Or they have me blocked or they don't want anything to do with me. They've shut their energy down towards me. I can feel their energy being pulled back and yeah they're like there's no point in this this could even be you guys going out and partying with the four of wands this could be you going out and living your best life and having fun having a blast and um them being very scared about like where do i fit in um or what if they just find someone new what if they just don't want to date me and they um completely move on and like find someone else um yeah i feel like I feel like this person almost doesn't know what role they would play in your life or what value they could bring to you. So in a way, they may have tried to sabotage things to make themselves feel better, or they may have also, um, like, I don't know, pushed you away or done something that yeah kind of like wanted to pull down your self image you know like wanted to reduce your value so that you would put up with them um or so that you would feel like you had to stay with them and i feel like they're kind of realizing that that didn't work and that it kind of backfired completely because if they did do anything disrespectful maybe this is why some of you guys cut this person off um but there's some energy of them kind of being like oh wow so they were really serious so they weren't joking around <laughs> okay great and really feeling that kind of panic and fear and not knowing um where exactly they could fit in for you or where exactly they can add value to your life um i feel like this person may have been in a lot of bravado at first like if they did do something bad or you cut them off initially they may have been very like whatever about it and kind of didn't care at all and kind of acted like it was no big deal and i feel like now they've kind of come to a place of being like okay yeah i, I really messed that up and i do regret it and i do regret how i handled things and i should have been different about it um I feel like this person is it's almost coming through it's funny the princess of cups is sticking out to me and i feel like they saw you as very very beautiful but it's funny because they didn't want to acknowledge that at first and it's almost like pulling teeth getting them to admit um that they did have such a crush on you or they were so attracted to you because i feel like the energy i'm getting at first is kind of like trying to play it cool and trying to be like yeah i mean uh, they're okay i guess yeah they yeah i guess they look good whatever and um it's like they don't want you to know they kind of think well if i play it cool if i downplay it then maybe pile two will believe it pile three excuse me will believe it as well and pile three will just think oh yeah i'm not that pretty or you know i shouldn't be picky this person's good enough and i feel like yeah they're kind of having that realization that not only did that not work but it did backfire and you are now less interested in them than you were at the beginning um i also feel like they see you as a powerhouse like you're not letting grass grow under your feet so to speak you are on to the next and i'm hearing that swiss beats line that i always hear in certain readings that's like on to the next one on to the next one and there's a million ways to get it so i feel like they think that that's your mentality you're just on to the next you're just doing your thing um let me get some song cards for pile number three one-on-one -on -one hollow notes okay i'm closing my eyes for this wildflower beach house one just okay two i guess infinite arms bands of horses and diplomat sun vampire weekend and let's see wouldn't it be nice the beach boys and this is 
the bright side little peep let's get one final card death by a thousand cuts taylor swift and that's definitely a breakup song um and talking about the pain after a breakup when you like walk down a certain street and it reminds you of a person or maybe that's a different song that's cornelia street but anyway so there's a similar vibe so the point is i feel like with this person yeah, they may have acted very blasé to themselves. They may have even told themselves, like, I don't really care, but I feel like they think about you a lot. There's, I'm not going to lie, a little resentment coming through. Like, I feel like this person, maybe they have issues because I kind of feel like they're the kind of person that when they are with someone, like, they kind of resent them low-key at the same time. Like, not outright resent them where they just would, like, despise the person openly, but they might be that kind of person that like if their girlfriend is acting kind of silly and like feeling in a goofy mood they might be like Ugh, you're like your laugh is freaking annoying you know and like or if someone is like doing a playful thing in a relationship or kind of like i don't know goofing around or feels really comfortable and kind of like you know smiling at them they might get kind of like weird and act resentful or be like why are you looking at me like that? Like, uh, you're being cringe. You know, I feel like they kind of, they kind of like to keep people at arm's length. And also they kind of feel uncomfortable with a lot of emotion. So I feel like they kind of do things to sabotage that when things get really emotional or intense. Um, and this person may also not be looking for something long-term. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I could definitely see this person having acted badly or not having lived up to something and you guys putting some space. And I feel like this person is full of a lot of bravado. So at first they probably acted like they didn't care and now they're kind of admitting to themselves that they do feel that loss of you, but it irritates them. They're not happy about that. They're not like do taking it as a moment of like, you know what, I have to admit, I messed that up. It was my fault. Yeah, I kind of deserved it, whatever. No, they are, you know, doing the like, oh, really? You're going to leave me? <sighs> Whatever. I don't care at all. It doesn't bother me. And they even would tell themselves that. Like, I feel like they would tell themselves something negative about you to make themselves feel better. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's get some tarot for this person because I don't know about this energy. This is just not my favorite energy. I'm not going to lie. What is this person thinking, feeling towards pile number three? Three of wands, okay. So we got the three and four of wands. Knight of wands, okay. Yeah, this person may not be capable of a lot of emotional depth. Not gonna lie. Ace of swords. I also can see this person worrying a lot about like who's winning, quote unquote who is winning in a relationship, who is, who came out on top after the breakup and all that jazz. Six of swords. Okay. And let's get two more cards for pile number three, the seven of cups. And this one flew out the queen of pentacles. So yeah, they may see, um, I'm hearing, I think it's the Lil Wayne quote, but it's like, because I'm about my business. It may be like Kanye. I'm not sure. Um, I think it's on a Kanye song, but I can't remember. But the point is, I feel like this, that's like your energy. Like they're kind of almost saying like, oh, pile number three isn't even capable of a relationship because they're so focused on themselves. And I feel like they may tell themselves a lot of narratives like that. Like they may tell themselves negative things about you to make themselves feel better. Or they may... Um, like if this is a new crush or something, this may be a reason for them to not step forward is they may think, yeah, like pile number three is so independent. What kind of value could I even bring to their life? Like they don't need me. And it's almost like they need someone to be dependent on them because deep down they do have that lack of self-worth and they do have that fear that if, you know, they didn't have some kind of control or if you didn't really need, need, need them that you wouldn't be interested at all. I also could see this person being in like a short term relationship mind frame with the Knight of Wands coming out. They may not be looking for that deep emotional depth. Um, yeah, the only cup card we got is the Seven of Cups. Um, and so, yeah, they may feel like they are just looking for something that's a short term fling or they're on to the next or I even if they have emotions, they may be trying to seem that like they may be trying to hurt you back 
or make you miss them or something or make you see like, oh, wow, look, they have so many options. Look, they got so many girls. Oh, I should have been nicer to them. Like they may be trying to make you regret things or just make you think of them as like, you know, oh, look how many people they can have. Look how many options they have. Wow. Look at pile number three. And so I feel like they, yeah, to me, this is not an energy that would be super conducive to like a relationship because it just feels like they are so, I don't want to say confused, but not in that mind frame of like long-term longevity and being focused on another person and really, you know, meeting with them one-on-one -on -one and like opening up to your soul. It feels like they are still in a very like selfish kind of mind frame. You know what I mean? Let me get some more cards though from another deck. So we are going to do these cards for pile number three. And we want to know how other person is thinking and feeling. Other person is thinking and feeling. Dragon's Lair. What I just heard so loud in my mind is you're not supposed to be the one who's like thriving and happy. I am. And they were saying, I'm not supposed to be the one crying. You're supposed to be crying. That's what they were saying to me. So yeah, I feel like they they expected you to be really upset and they are bothered because it feels like you weren't bothered. You feel like you just are living your best life or you are thriving or something. And I feel like they, I also feel like you didn't like show that you were even sweating things. Like there was some energy of you just like, maybe you didn't make like a sad Instagram post about like, you know, when someone like, disappoints you and breaks your heart you have to move on or maybe you didn't even acknowledge it maybe you just posted like a happy selfie and they never saw that you were actually crying in bed and that you were actually like really sad about it or whatever the case may be but it feels like they wanted to know that you like cared more and they never got that validation and I do feel like that hit them in the ego you know that made them be like oh that <laughs> that surprisingly hurt me I didn't know I had feelings I didn't even know I had, could have those emotions but yeah I'm upset yeah I thought they were going to be there forever and they were just going to stick around and put up with my bs and now they are completely moved on like wtf so yeah I feel like they definitely didn't like that and they they do care about that validation they do care about wanting to have a certain image or wanting to seem like the one in control um and it feels like you just took your power back like effortlessly just no nope, I'm not doing this anymore or who are you like kind of vibe like you're not sweating them you're not stressing about them you're really thriving and living your best life and there's some vibe of them having like unfinished business because of that because maybe they have done this to other people in the past and those people have like really cried or you know given them some feedback for their ego where they showed how sad they were and they like begged them to take them back and they get off on that a little bit and i feel like instead you just did your own thing you just like okay you don't you want to break up okay yeah, that's fine. And it's like, because of that, they never got the little, you know, satisfaction they wanted of knowing that they had really affected you. And that drives them crazy. Let's get some of these cards for pile number three. What is pile number three's person thinking and feeling towards them? Diamond dreamer, material wealth, true prosperity. Yeah, I feel like they see you as, again, thriving. You also got the queen of pentacles. I think that's a major kind of concern for them is like, look how well pile number three is doing. The metal king, okay. And then we also got the dragon's duel and the queen of the light. Okay, so yeah, I feel like you put up some boundaries. You kind of put up some discipline and just uh, told them no and they may not be used to being told no they may not be someone that is used to hearing i'm not interested or i'm not putting up with you um i feel like you've kind of alchemized and focused on yourself you may be doing spiritual work shadow work or just living your best life and have like this glow going on like you just seem powerful and strong and just Mm, you're not waiting around for them. You're not sitting there crying into your pillow and just wishing they would come back. Like you're focused on building your life. You're focused on, you know, doing that shadow work, doing the soul growth work. You are spiritual and you're also a hustler. And I feel like with this person, it's like 
they are starting to realize how rare you are and what they truly lost because there was a part of them that really thought they had you. Like they thought, I have pile three right where I want them. I'm hearing that song, Right Where You Left Me by Taylor Swift. And that song is all about like being kind of traumatized by a relationship and unable to move on and still kind of hoping the person comes back and being kind of like obsessed with them and, and not really being able to like mentally move through it. And I feel like that's what they thought was going to happen with you. And that's what they kind of low key wanted to happen. Like they were hoping that you were going to be like, please just text me one more time or like six months down the road you were gonna call them and be like can we just talk i mean honestly i've tried to date other people but i can't and not only did that not happen but it seems like instead you're living your best life and i feel like this person is just kind of shook like they can't they don't they don't know like they've never had this happen before they don't know what's going on and this has honestly been i feel like a huge ego hit for them like this is making them question themselves this is making them wonder like about who they are like for the first time because i do feel like their ego was pretty solid and secure and now for the first time it's like oh my god did i really mess up but then i feel like they hate to even think that so they wouldn't follow that train of thought they'd be like no no you didn't mess up but then that thought comes back later especially when they're trying to go to sleep and they can't sleep and you know they're thinking of you or something reminds them of you um yeah i think we got yeah we got a lot of songs kind of about regret and I keep hearing the song, I Thought I Saw Your Face Today um, by Shan Him. And so yeah, they may kind of see your face everywhere, or kind of like everything reminds them of you. Let's get some astrology dice for pile number three, what astrological energies are at play. Mm, Scorpio, that makes a lot of sense. Mercury and then the third house. So this is like double Gemini and also there's some Virgo there because Mercury also rules Virgo. So we have Scorpio, Virgo, and then Gemini. So Scorpio, that makes perfect sense. Scorpio is so vengeful and um, it's a fixed sign. So they don't get over things. Um, I could also see the Scorpio energy because we're not hating on Scorpios. I love Scorpios. Um, I'm a Pisces, so I feel like I'm contractually obligated to love Scorpios, <laughs> right? Like it's just how it works. Um, but yeah, so this could also be your energy because also Scorpio goes through so much transmutation and like destruction and then being reborn and that's literally a huge archetype of their sign they have the phoenix in their sign so you know they're not afraid of a little death and rebirth and i feel like you were kind of that person that you were like okay cool yeah that's fine i'm fine with having my heart broken right now and yeah catch catch you in six months when i'm thriving and you just kind of trusted that process and i feel like they didn't they kind of tried to just soothe their ego and pretend everything was fine they didn't allow themselves to delve deep into those emotions the way a scorpio would and that's what allows scorpios to have that rebirth is because they're not afraid of the darkness they're not afraid of the death moment or the pain they love it they kind of drink it in in the way all water signs love emotions and love even the pain even when it's a little destructive they just love any emotion so you know they're gonna go there and especially scorpio loves to go there and i feel like you were willing to take on that kind of moment of sacred pain and learn that lesson and allow it to transmute you and tra and to transform you and so now you're thriving and it could also be them having that scorpionic kind of vengefulness that you know you don't mess with the scorpion it will sting you and trying to sting you and instead getting that karma boomerang back around um and also of course scorpio is a fixed sign so it doesn't move on it stays focused on someone it doesn't forget it doesn't get over it it's gonna have those emotions always it's fixed water still water so yeah i feel like this person may have thought they were playing you but congratulations you played yourself and that's yeah that's what they have to deal with i guess and that's probably hard for their ego additionally then we have mercury so mercury is the planet of like learning and curiosity and language and communication and it rules over gemini which we'll get to of course and then we have virgo as well um, and virgos are perfectionists venus can be debilitated in virgo because it can be that perfectionist that sees everything wrong and that's why virgos are so amazing when you need advice when you need some wisdom and no one can like get your act together like a virgo and point out things you need to do different and after you make those changes even though you may be kind of offended when they point it all out after you make those changes like you go through a glow up because everything they said was right and you hate to admit it but you're like yeah that's valid <laughs> but it also 
can be hard to be on the receiving end of that. And Virgos can sometimes be a little pessimistic. And so what's coming through with the Virgo energy is kind of that, um, like, someone being overly critical or this person maybe seeing your you know seeing your flaws where they where ideally with a partner yeah we can see some flaws but hopefully you know venus is exalted in pisces for that reason we kind of see them through a rose-colored glasses and we see them a little bit perfect or more perfect than they are or we don't focus on their flaws and so i feel like this person kind of focused on your flaws a lot and that was one of the reasons maybe things fell apart or that's kind of how they justified everything i could also see this being the positive interpretation of Virgo is Virgo loves to like work on themselves. They love to do self-improvement. They perfectionist, not just for everyone else, but for themselves. And so, you know, no one can, well, Scorpios definitely do that glow up better than anyone, but you know, maybe Virgos are in the content, in the contention along with like Capricorn and other signs for just being able to really perfect and transmute themselves and turn themselves into the best version of themselves and being willing to take that work on and being disciplined about it. And I feel like that's kind of your energy. Like you've been willing to take that out. You've been willing to look at yourself and be like, well, let me fix this, this, I'm working hard on that. And you've kind of had that hustler vibe around you that I feel like is very attractive and is bringing you success. And that's what has this person shook is they kind of thought they were gonna leave you in the dust and you would be like crying alone and sad, desperate, and that has not happened. Then we have the third house, Gemini. Gemini, and that is the house of communication. Geminis love to communicate. Geminis can also be chaotic. They are a mutable sign and they can tend to make really hasty decisions and just like do things like for no reason that later someone might be offended. That's why I think there is a lot of Gemini hate on the internet, but I never understand that because I love Geminis and I think they're so much fun to be around. Um, so yeah, I don't agree with that, but I think that's why maybe a few people had bad experiences with Gemini suns because they can be chaotic or just change their mind or think they want one thing and then the next minute they decide something else. I could see this person having made a chaotic decision with you. Like if they did do something that was destructive to the relationship, it could have been something they did at the spur of the moment and they could be coming through to acknowledge that it wasn't something they had like thought out and been like, were being really rational and like, no, I definitely want to end this. It could have been like, they just did something stupid in the moment for like, you know, attention or just to be dramatic. And then later they're like, oh, I really messed that up. And I do regret that in the way that, yeah, any mutable sign can make a decision in the moment. And then later be like, oops, sorry. I was just feeling that way now. And now I feel the total opposite. So yeah, I mean, again, I'm a Pisces, so not judging Gemini because we have that aspect ourselves, but it is what it is. And then a positive thing about Gemini is how great they are at communication. And I feel like this person does want to communicate and reach out to you. I feel like they are curious, which is also a Gemini trait about what you have going on. And they really do want to talk to you. They just don't want to have to be the one to lower their ego and you know, admit and kind of be the first one to break no contact or the, be the first one to say how much they like you. So that is what I have for you. Pile number three. I really hope that resonates. If it does, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you, hearing your thoughts, stories, observations. So I'd love to know. Also, make sure to give this reading a thumbs up, hit the like button, subscribe. And if you want to see more of my readings, head on over to my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about how you can improve your love life and get a boyfriend. And before that, I posted a reading about how what you're manifesting. There's also a career reading I just posted, a money reading, and a bunch of love readings. So if all that sounds good to you and you're interested in signing up, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description for my Patreon. As soon as you sign up, you'll get access to over 80 exclusive readings you'll only find on Patreon. You also get early and ad-free access access to all my YouTube videos. So like I said, if all that sounds good, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description and join me on Patreon. Also, if you are interested in a private session with me, you can get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. If you have some really specific questions you want me to answer, whether you want me to use astrology, tarot, channeling, we can get into some specifics about your life, if there's some kind of burning question you have, or if you just want me to open channel and do an energy check-in and see what your guides have to say and let them come through with a message and kind of go over a life overview or a um, mediumship session, whatever the case may be, you can totally get all of that and you can get it at my website, briarrosetarot.com, and the link for that is in my description. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I will see you again very soon with another reading. Take care, guys, and I will see you then. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, so if you guys picked this 
elemental card this is going to be your reading it says nature spirits the four elements and let's get into your tarot as well you guys got the moon the four of swords the death card the nine of wands the ten of pentacles and the seven of cups so what's coming through right away is this kind of protective instinct from your person i feel like first of all they're very intrigued by you they're very curious about you and they think of you as someone who's quite mysterious or that they can't fully get a hold of like i feel like they want to know more you definitely have their intention but they're kind of not sure of how to go about that i also feel like there's a lot of sense of fadedness fadedness or a spiritual connection from this relationship it feels like this person may feel like they met you magically or you guys were brought together by fate or that immediately after meeting you they were dreaming of you or they couldn't stop thinking of you but it's almost like a soul connection even if this person isn't into a lot of spiritual stuff or they're not someone who um you know, watches tarot videos or has heard of like twin flames or knows a lot about soulmates or past lives, they may still feel like, wow, that was very different with pile number four. I also feel like they see you as very spiritual. There's some energy of them keeping their distance or not wanting you to know how much they like you. I'm seeing this person moving in shadow and keeping things very much kind of secret and playing things very close to the best and not wanting to give all their cards away. We have a lot of, you know, very mysterious tarot cards. We have the death card. We have the death card. It feels like this person is trying to kind of like not let you know because I also feel like there's a sense of them not fully knowing their emotions or not knowing what this is. Like there's a part of them that's like, am I going crazy or what is this? Like I never experienced something like this. And honestly, I feel a little nuts. Like this doesn't really make sense. This is kind of weird. Like, come on, this, yeah, what is happening? And I feel like because of that, again, like they don't fully trust whatever this is and they're kind of not sure how to take it. Like I don't feel like they've experienced anything like this before. They have maybe never felt this kind of a connection and part of them does wonder, am I going crazy? We got the seven of cups, which can literally indicate like delusion. It depends on how the seven of cups comes out. I actually really like the seven of cups and I think it can have a lot of positive meanings as well. But one interpretation depending can be like delusion. And I feel like that's this person's energy is feeling like maybe they're delusional or maybe they're crazy or like not kind of understanding the spiritual component of this and kind of thinking like, uh, okay, like I, I've lost my mind. I keep thinking of pile number four. I wake up every morning, I'm thinking of them. They're probably gonna get a restraining order if they could know that I think of them this much. Um, so yeah, there's a big part of them like not being willing to fully embrace this, like recognizing it and being like kind of grateful for it, kind of, but also just not wanting anyone else to know like how much they think about you. Uh, and not even wanting to admit it to themselves, like kind of being like, okay, this is this is getting weird, you know, like, why can't I stop thinking about pile four? What the heck is going on? Um, being a little bit like almost judgmental of themselves. Maybe they're not used to operating in that place. I could see this person having Scorpio placements. I was gonna say, maybe they don't have a lot of water and that's why they're freaked out by the emotions and the spiritual side, but I'm getting heavy Scorpio as well because Scorpio loves to play things close to the vest. They don't like everyone to know what they're thinking. They don't want to tell anything about themselves. Ideally, if they could just literally wear an invisibility cloak and not even let people see their face, Scorpios would. Um, but, you know, I feel like this person feels very called to you, like impelled to you. Like it's not something that they're really choosing of like, oh yeah, let me, yeah, this looks good. Everything works on paper. This is great. Yeah, this will be fantastic for me. It feels like they're like, what am I doing? Like maybe you guys don't even seem like you fit together on paper. Like maybe there's some jarring big mismatches. Like you guys are different religion or you have a completely different culture and it's a big part of your life or you guys have completely different interests. Like they're really big into math. You're horrible at math and you're a big, you know, arts and 
uh, like literature girl and they're like always in the past would be like oh you know literature isn't a real subject like come on math is real and it's measurable and now they find themselves like having to listen to you talk about Emily Dickinson and being like what is happening in my life you know what I mean like I feel like they're kind of yeah there's times when they're like wait a minute this will not work out what am i doing and it's almost like they kind of like have to talk themselves out of it and have to like talk themselves back in and be like okay because i feel like their heart is you know speaking really loudly to them so it's like they're kind of listening to that but they also question like am i going nuts or like what am i doing this is probably insane um i'm hearing that song the heart wants what it wants by selena gomez and i definitely feel like that fits the vibe with this person i also feel like this person finds you to be very kind of mischievous sweet and definitely give off actually this fairy energy with the elementals how it shows a bunch of fairies on it like i feel like you kind of have that almost like delicate quality that a fairy does where they're kind of small and beautiful and they kind of are impish and they, you know, they fly around to this thing and that thing and they kind of like live in a flower. Like I almost feel like there's a vibe with that with you. Like something about your personality, like it almost, like I said, brings out their protective side and they kind of want to look after you and take care of you. Or they may think of you as like very clumsy or very bad with money or very like, like how does pile four get through the day like i want to know how do they even like manage to get from their bed to work because they are so clumsy i'm surprised they don't trip and fall every foot they try to walk you know or how do they how do they manage their finances they are so scatterbrained you know what i mean but i feel like this person thinks of it as really cute and they kind of want to protect you from like the world in some way um I feel like this person actually, if you're dating this person, I feel like they could imagine themselves in a long-term relationship with you. Like even having kids with you one day, because the Ten of Pentacles shows that, um, like a like a long lineage of a family. So yeah, I feel like they kind of, it's almost surprising to them. Like, what the hell? What is this? Why is this happening? Like, why do I suddenly, have I met this person and now I think of them all the time? And they're not someone I would pick. Like, to be honest, they are not someone I would pick. And I don't mean that in a bad way, Pile, for it's just like, I feel like the, the, um, like draw to you is overwhelming. It's, it's like they are being impelled. It's not like, you know, a lot of married couples that get together, they get married because it's like, yeah, you know, we come from the same background and, uh, we like the same things and they make good money and I make good money and uh, they blah, blah, blah. And it's like a lot of things on paper, you know, which is fine. It's fine to make your mind up for whatever you want in your life in whatever way you want, you know. Um, but I feel like this is not that. This is the opposite. This is like I'm they don't really have anything I want but I'm still in love with them and I feel like in a way that's like the most pure form of love I mean maybe that's why Venus is exalted in Pisces because Pisces is very intuitive and it goes with the flow it goes with a feeling um, it opposes Virgo where Venus is in fall and Virgo is very logical and very rational and that's where Venus the planet of love is in its fall so yeah I mean there's something to be said for using your intuition and even the astrologers seem to say that yeah that kind of love where you're just going off a vibe and a feeling may be more powerful than all the others and I definitely feel like this person would agree because it feels like whatever they're feeling towards you has definitely like bowled them over in a way that no one else has like they just feel much more drawn to you in a way that I feel like really takes them by surprise like they've never experienced this before so let's get some uh, song cards for you. Pile number four. Turn to white, she and him. Okay. Just say yes, Snow Patrol. I love that song. What songs do we have for the feelings, vibes of pile four? I was a fool, Tegan and Sarah. Door, Caroline Polachek. Yeah, definitely a spiritual component to this. Radar, Britney Spears. And let's see beyond love beach house mm -hmm. i'm telling you guys and let's get one more song for pile four this is what you came for taylor swift and rihanna i love that line like in that song that to me it's a taylor swift song because yeah but where she says um and a rihanna song um where she says and everybody's watching her but she's looking at you that's such a taylor swift line by the way like who could ever have believed she didn't write that song but yeah um 
I feel like this person sees you like that, like this kind of magical vibe of like, she's the star or he's the star or everyone's, wow, like they they just stand out in a crowd. Like if there was a crowd of people, you know, they feel like they'd be staring at you and you would just have their attention. Even if you were among like a bunch of models or you know what I mean? Like famous actresses or actors and like, you know, a bunch of sex symbols, you would be the one sticking out. And I feel like they kind of assume everyone feels that way about you. Like, they're just like, yeah, of course, everyone would be staring at pile four. Of course, because they're perfect. Like, duh. And um, yeah, I feel like they definitely see that spiritual thing with you. And it does make them want to protect you. It does make them want to look out for you. And if you're doubting, I'm hearing, I don't know, some of you guys may be in a relationship with this person. And if you ever doubt, like, do they really care that much? I don't know. Maybe they're just, you know, with me for now. But no, like, they definitely really care about you. They really love you. And I feel like um, they do feel like it's spiritual. We got Dor, Caroline Polachek. We got the Moon card. We got the Four of Swords, the Death card. Like, I definitely feel like this is an astral plane collection, connection. You might, guys may have some really crazy sinistry, you know, south node or north node aspects in your sinistry or something. Um, it feels like this is just very powerful and very potent. And... I feel like this person almost like has tried to like, <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to freak anyone out by saying like, hey, they tried to break up with you or they tried to <laughs> leave you. But I almost feel like there may have been something like that where this person was like, okay, stop thinking pile four, stop, stop, stop. You need to cut them off because this is crazy. And they just can't like stay away. They just really like you that much. It's like, how could I possibly not, you know, be obsessed with them? Like, how could I possibly walk away from this person when it's that powerful and i feel it that intensely um yeah this person i feel like for some of you guys could see marriage like they could imagine being with you forever let's get some uh more cards for pile number four what is this person thinking and feeling temperance as a, as i just say they are they think they could be with you forever we get the temperance card yeah they definitely want something long term with you pile four I feel like they see you as someone who has it all like in a way like I said in a way you don't have anything they were looking for and that's what makes it so potent and powerful but on the other hand it's like you kind of have everything they're looking for but on a deeper spiritual level like maybe you don't have any of the material things or the kind of like human realm things of like the certain look they wanted or the career or like what they thought they were going to get in a partner maybe you don't have any of that but you have things on the spiritual realm and on the emotional realm that is like oh my god this is like a dream this is exactly what i wanted like i am so lucky and this is amazing and wow like i feel like they're kind of blown away let's get some more cards for pile number four the king of pentacles yeah they definitely want to like look after you and take care of you Three of Cups, how are they feeling towards pile number? Okay, that one spun around. The Seven of Wands. Okay, so yeah, I feel like this person, um, it's almost like they want to show you how strong and powerful they can be with for you. We got the Strength card. We got the King of Pentacles. I feel like they worry about being able to protect you. It's almost like because they do see you as so vulnerable and soft and fragile and delicate and perfect, like this perfect little piece of porcelain that they don't want to break, that I think sometimes they worry that like, you know, how do I how do I show that I'm good enough for them? Or how do I just protect them and look after them? How do I make them trust me? How do I take care of them? Um, I feel like they kind of don't want to come on too strong, especially if this is like beginning or this is a crush or someone you aren't really talking to. There's a part of them that is like afraid of like, if I come on that strong to pile number four, they're going to freak out. They're going to run away from me. You know, um, let me kind of like, keep myself at a distance or let me kind of you know not not overwhelm them I feel like they they're kind of afraid of you running for some reason like they're afraid of you usually a lot of times it's the runner that we're tuning into their energy and they're kind of scared but it's like they're afraid you're going to be scared they're afraid you're going to run off and like leave them in the dust and i feel like that's why they don't want to like scare you off so that's why they may be cagey with their emotions or not be fully transparent with you and kind of like not fully full honesty because i feel like they are really terrified that if they fully let you know how much they're feeling that you would be like uh 
no way like that's way too much this is too early or something like that or I mean like I didn't know you felt that strong like I know we're dating but like that's kind of crazy so I feel like instead they also may just have trouble like communicating their emotions and they may have an easier time showing their emotions through like acts of service or physical touch or um, like doing things for you instead of telling you um, so yeah I feel like they you know uh, yeah their emotions are really strong I don't know what else to say <laughs> Their emotions are really strong for you, pile number four. And I also feel like they love to see you happy with the three of cups. That's what's coming through is like they love it when you're in a good mood. They love to see you joyful and excited and, you know, happy and hopeful about something. Let me get into some more cards. We are going to pull some more cards for pile number four. So what can you tell me about what pile four person is thinking and feeling, spirit? What are they thinking and feeling towards pile four? Goblins. Yeah, they definitely want to protect you from the world. Like I said, peaks of joy, spark. They see you as very creative, very different, very unique from everyone else and very emotional, sad embrace. So yeah, they see you as like very emotional and creative and almost giving manic pixie dream girl vibes or something like that, like fairy vibes. Like I feel like they see you as this beautiful like magical creature of chaos that like somehow swept into their life and at first they were like what the what is this kind of like you know one of those people that says like i'll never have a, a pet or i hate dogs and then like a random chihuahua shows up and they fall in love <laughs> and you guys are the chihuahua or like a cat that you know climbs over the furniture and does all this wild stuff but they're like they're like i I love it though it's so cute and it's so perfect and they never thought they wanted it but it adds like this it completes this puzzle piece in their life I feel like that's kind of the vibe with you and they do worry about other people coming for you in other ways like jealous people or people that don't deserve your energy or also you dating someone else that would really bother them I feel like they don't want you to know how much that bothers them because they don't want to again come across like a crazy like lunatic but I do feel like that bothers them and the idea of you leaving them definitely bothers them and they are low-key kind of like jealous and possessive of you but yeah okay let's get some more cards for pile number four um what is pile number four thinking and feeling towards pile four the fire prince optimism aggression okay and let's see the horse king assistance control i do feel like this person also wants to like look perfect in your mind and they kind of worry about not doing that or not being in control or kind of like they do want to make like a very good impression on you you know and i feel like they want you to know that you can trust them or something or you can rely on them and that's a big thing for them like honestly i would say if this is someone that you like back and you want to make a move on them like honestly a good way to do it maybe like asking them for help with something um especially if this is like a guy who's into you because i feel like they would love to like step up to the plate in that way like they definitely want to impress you they definitely want you to be like wow oh my gosh wow, four oh my god thank you and that could like allow them to like show their emotions towards you without you them having to open up which i feel like they're not good at so if you were like oh by the way like i you know I need help moving or something like that I feel like that might be easier for them to like like you know hang out with you and like open that door up than if you were like well how do you feel talk me through your emotions that they probably wouldn't like that um, yeah they see you as very like there's also a lot of curiosity I don't know if you like don't post a lot on social media or you're kind of mysterious or you don't talk a lot about yourself but I feel like there's a lot of questions they still have there's a lot unanswered and I think it just intrigues them and makes them want to know you more and just makes them more and more curious. They also see you as very kind, selfless, generous, sweet, um, and like a really good person. And like I said, this person kind of gets jealous low key and they kind of also like hide that from you. They don't want you to know <laughs> like how aggressive they could get over you or how like possessive they could be over you so i feel like with the fire prince they kind of hide that like they kind of want to put their best foot forward towards you and be like no i'm gentle and sweet too but like deep down you kind of bring out that side of them that's like you know they would like do anything for you including something crazy or you know they would really want to beat someone up just because they were like in an instagram photo with you but they would never tell you that because 
they don't want you to be scared off, but they, you know, but they would like definitely want to beat up that other person, you know, not going to lie. Let's get into some astrology dice for pile number four. What astrology dice do we have for pile four? Wow. So we have Venus, we have Cancer, and we have Pisces. I knew I was getting all this water. Like I almost mentioned Pisces, but anyway, so we have Venus. Venus, of course, is the planet of love. It rules over Taurus and it rules over Libra. And so Venus placements, whether they're a Venus sun, like a, a Taurus or a Libra sun, or uh, ascendant moon, Venus, whatever. But a lot of Taurus placements just have this natural grace to them, this natural beauty. They are very in tune with beauty. They are very in tune with the luxury of life, the finer things in life. They can be kind of like relaxed and chill and kind of have that graceful, um, like beautiful laid back demeanor that a lot of that Venus energy really is. And I feel like you give off that vibe of like, you're not, I don't know. I feel like they just love your energy. They love spending time with you and you seem kind of gentle and sweet and loving. Um, but also like a little self-centered, but not in a bad way. It just feels like you do your own thing. You focus on yourself. And again, I feel like this person really likes that. And sometimes they kind of, um, not are freaked out by it but i feel like they love that but there's also a side of them that sometimes is like um just comparing themselves to you and they see you as so beautiful and graceful and in comparison maybe they feel like they're like an ogre or they're kind of like you know just they need to be like more sweet and relaxed the way you are um so yeah that could kind of play on their insecurities a little bit then we also have the fourth house that's the house of family it's ruled by cancer and the moon we got the moon of course leading off this deck and that card actually is ruled by pisces of all just to make it extra com confusing for those who are le le learning tarot right and now i can't speak english but whatever so the fourth house of family this person could definitely imagine starting a family with you and also that cancer energy of being a caretaker and cancers have a beautiful high i think a lot of cancer girls like pull guys like left right and center whenever i see prominent cancer and some girls chart i'm always like i bet you pull a lot of guys and they'll always be like yeah guys are drawn to me because they kind of give off that like mom energy and i know that sounds weird but you know a lot of people may be looking for like that, you know, that archetype. It's a very powerful feminine archetype. And I feel like you give off that vibe, that nurturing, sweet, loving vibe that a lot of men find so attractive about cancers. Um, the way they will look after people, the way they will take care of others, the way they will really be in their emotional center and not be in like a masculine energy. And they'll be like showing love by being nurturing and sweet and also being very creative, which is also a cancer thing, a water sign thing in general um so yeah i feel like this person you know they just love your personality your vibe your energy your looks as well but also your vibe then we have pisces and pisces is very creative just like cancer very very creative and also um very psychic and intuitive and i feel like you give off that vibe also a thing about pisces that i think really defines the energy is the fact that it's ruled by jupiter it's co-ruled by jupiter it's in modern astrology ruled by neptune but in ancient astrology it was ruled by jupiter and um, they have that same element that sagittarius has of being kind of non-committal onto the next swimming around and kind of being hard to pin down or hard to get a hold of they're not a fixed sign they're a mutable sign they can be kind of unreliable but in like a charming way um kind of like you never really know where they're going to be or what they're going to be up to they may be kind of unreachable they may not respond to texts right away and that can sometimes add to their charm and make them have this kind of elusive uh, mystique and i feel like you guys definitely give off that vibe like you definitely have this vibe of they don't really know you they haven't quite figured you out and you may seem like you always change in the way a pisces can be mutable and always change um, and you may seem like very unpredictable and i feel like again they find that attractive they're not turned off by it they think of it as like kind of cool and like i feel like they really feel that connection up on the astral plane um, that pisces is so good at ruling the 12th house being ruled by neptune it's a super spiritual sign most pisces are highly psychic and intuitive well, all Pisces placements, I would say. So yeah, I feel like they really love the psychic side of you, the spiritual side of you, and they may feel like this is a faded spiritual connection. They may dream of you. They may feel just like their mind is always coming back to you and that there was some kind of spiritual reason for you guys meeting. 
Um, but yeah, that is what I have for you pile four. I really hope it resonates. If it does, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you guys, hearing your thoughts, stories. So let me know what you think. Also make sure to give this reading a thumbs up, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my content, head on over to my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about how you can improve your love life and find a boyfriend. And before that, I posted a reading all about what you are manifesting as well as a career reading, a money reading, and a bunch of love readings but there is so much content over on patreon over 80 exclusive readings you'll only get access to as soon as you sign up and you also get early and add free access to all my youtube videos so if all of that sounds good to you and you're interested in signing up head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments in the description and join me on patreon also, if you're interested in booking a private session with me, you can do that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. Whether you want to ask me some really specific questions, get down into the nitty gritty and really get into some specific astrology, tarot, channeling, um, you can have that. You can also just do an open channeling session and do an energy check-in, see what your guides have to say. Just ask generalized questions about life or do a life reading. Either one works. So if you're interested and you want to sign up for that, head to my website, briarrosetarot.com and book a session with me. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I will see you again very soon in another reading. Take care, guys. Bye.